Hi everyone, this is Josh Bayless from joshbayless.com where I help internet and network marketers uh, become expert online marketers. So you can go to joshbayless.com to get uh, tips and training. Um, today I've got uh, here with me Andrea Waltz, the co-author of Go For No, and uh, this interview uh, isn't gonna last too long, but uh, I think she's got some really good tips for you, so you might want to get out a uh, pen and paper and take a, take down a few notes. So, Andrea, tell us a little bit about your story. Where did you grow up, and um, what key events led up to you becoming a su successful author and uh, speaker? Okay. Well, thanks for having me, Josh. Um, I, uh, I grew up in Southern California and I got a, uh, I was working at Lens Crafters, the retail eyeglass store, and I was getting a Bachelor of Science in Criminal Justice at the time. Um, and I met my now husband, the co-author, creator of Go For No, and he actually shared with me um, the Go For No story. And at that time, I was a manager for one of our biggest locations. I thought I was a pretty su much a superstar um, at my job and actually a superstar salesperson. So he shares the go for no story with me. And I was like, wow, that is an amazing message. I need to apply this in my job. So I did. I became even more successful. And then Richard convinced me that we should quit our corporate jobs and start our own speaking and training company. So I was pretty young and I, I graduated. I got my degree in criminal justice and I decided that I didn't really want to work for the um, the local government doing crime scene investigation <laughs> as much as I thought I had. So I said, yeah, that sounds like fun. I would love to be, I, I never thought about being an entrepreneur. Um, so literally I, we quit our jobs. I quit first actually for the first couple of months, set up our office. I had no idea what I was doing, but I knew this. I knew that um, we had a problem that we were solving. That was what we were very clear on. We were going to help people overcome fear of failure and rejection. We were going to have, we were going to help people to give better customer service. We were going to help people manage other people better. And I knew that if I could find the market for those problems, um, they would hire us. And that's exactly what happened. And this was before, and I was, really wasn't emailing. There wasn't really internet. There was AOL, which is not really like having the internet. Um, so this is back in the dark ages, right? Um, and what I did was I just did research. Um, I did research. I found who was hiring speakers and trainers. I would send them really targeted information, and they hired us. And that's really how we launched our business. Um, and then kind of all the internet stuff came years after that, actually. Nice. So tell me a little bit more about the book, Go For No. Why did you and Richard decide to write it? And how can uh, people viewing this video right now get a copy? Um, so if you're an Amazon shopper, you can go to Amazon, just type in Go For No, or you can go to our website at gofornow.com. But um, the whole purpose of writing the book, and, and actually we've written a few short fables, and we, we love writing, um, we love storytelling, and Go For No is a story. It's not just kind of a how-to book. And so we, we love entertaining people. Um, and the whole purpose to Go For No is to teach people to intentionally increase their failure rate. So to go out there and hear no more often. And people think, well, why should I want to hear no more often? The problem is, is that people have been taught and trained to go for yes, um, which is great. I mean, yes is the destination, right? <laughs> but no is how you get there. If all you're focused on is hearing yes, if all you want to do is get yes and you do that at the expense of no, in other words, you avoid opportunities to hear no, then you really limit your opportunities. And that's really the, the crux of the book. When we write books, we always pick kind of a narrow, small message that people can focus on. In other words, you know, some people will be out there and they'll write a book on selling. And it's the 60 things that you need to be to, you know, to do to be a great salesperson or, you know, leadership, and they'll tackle everything about leadership, which is great. Um, and yet sometimes I think people like to have bite-sized chunks of information and really dig deep into something. And so we really dig deep into rejection and changing your mindset around failure. Awesome. Awesome. And 
I'm sure that you you've probably coached several internet uh, network marketer uh, type people. What are some of what are three the top three struggles that you see most often, and what are those the the solutions that that you give to those? Struggles? Mm. That's a that's a great question. It's not an there's not an easy answer, but I'll say the first one, Josh, is is um it's patience. You know, I see people being so impatient. And I hate to I hate to say this, but but in my experience, whether you're publishing a book, if you're starting a business, you're you're doing anything, things always take longer than you want them to. Um, and you have two choices in that moment. You can say wow, I've been doing this six months, it's not working, it's not building the way I want, it's not going the way I want, it's not going fast enough, and you can abandon and try something else that'll go faster, because um, you think, oh, well, it, this will somehow magically go faster, or you can stick with it and keep growing it and building it and understand that instead of the six-month plan that you wanted, it's it's two years, it's three years, and so patience, you've got to stick with it. Um, the second thing is probably fear of failure. It's it's so huge, and it's because we've all been taught and trained not to fail. You know, there's that saying that you hear people say all the time, you know, failure is not an option. Well, actually, failure is an option. Quite frankly, it happens oftentimes at the beginning of the process, and that's why people give up, right? And so getting out of that failure mindset and kind of reprogramming yourself to understand, hey, failure is going to happen. It's part of the process. If you're not failing, if you're not hearing no often enough, then you're not going, you know, you're not going to achieve the success that you're looking for. And then, um, and, and then probably the, the third thing I would say is a little different. It's, um, it's, it's really a, an argument about quantity and quality. I think a lot of people out there, they're not talking to enough people. I don't care what business you're in. It, it's, they're not putting the quantity of effort out there. A lot of people focus on quality. I have to say the perfect thing to the exact right person. Get out there and start talking to a lot of people. Start interacting with a lot of people, and you will build the quality of your interactions and your communication, and you will learn those skills as you go. But to sit in your living room and never call anyone or never talk to anybody or never go to a networking meeting or do anything because you just think you're not good enough, you're not skilled enough, you're not smooth enough, you know, um, is, a, is the death, right? It, it, you have to get out there and just do those things and practice and kind of build your wings on the way down. Wow, that's that's really really powerful stuff that you just shared. Um, I really really appreciate you doing this interview. Are there any last words that you want to give um, the people viewing this this uh, interview right now? Keeping in mind that that the majority of, of people watching this are more than likely network internet marketing type people. Mm -hmm. um, I would say uh, practice working on your prejudging other people and making assumptions. That's the kryptonite to go for no really is, is the whole idea of being willing to ask, being willing to, to get out there and to, to be rejected, have somebody tell you no. Um, what happens though is we avoid talking to people because we make assumptions about what they're going to decide, do what they're going to spend. We make all these prejudgments. So the next time that you want to talk to somebody, but you talk yourself out of it because you say, Oh, they're not gonna, they're not going to be interested or, or they're, they don't, they don't want to hear from me. Um, you got to get those, those assumptions out of your head. So that's my advice is just really work on ditching those assumptions and those, th that tendency to prejudge and just go for it. You have nothing to lose. They're not saying yes to you now. So go for no, you have nothing to lose. All right. I appreciate it. Uh, how can, um, how can people contact you? I would love people to go to gofornow.com. We've got blo a blog there, some videos, and, um, and the no quotient assessment people can do. So they can get a lot of information there just uh, poking around our website. All right. Thank you so much. Um, well, there you have it, folks. This is uh, Andrea Waltz, co-author of Go For No. Um, very, very powerful book. If you haven't got that uh, already, go to Amazon. And if you're watching this video on my on my blog, I'll have a link to Amazon for you to, to get that, that uh, book. Um, so go to joshbayless.com. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and sign up to my email list and I'll send you a free PDF of the five weird but very essential online tools that I use in my business. Take care and God bless and we'll see you in the next video.